Hey there, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us virtually tonight at Hackley Public Library. We are so excited for this evening's music performance. And oh, I'm just so excited. I can't wait. I think you guys are going to love it. We have Folius Duo here this evening. Um, before we begin, though, I just want to say again a huge thank you to everyone for watching and listening. A huge thank you to our friends of Hackley Library Group. Without them, many of our programs really wouldn't be possible. Um, and also feel free to visit hackleylibrary.org or Hackley Library's Facebook page for any upcoming programs and events that we have. But tonight, we are so excited for Folius Duo. We are going to be enjoying original classical music inspired by prose and poetry. And Folius Duo is comprised of Carmen Murray and Andrew Bergeron. And their interpersonal collaboration has really just breathed great new music into classical. And so thank you guys so much for joining us. And please welcome with me, Folius Duo. Thank you. Thank you, Mallory, for that gracious introduction. It's great to be here at the Hackley Public Library. I want to thank the Hackley for sponsoring this. It's great just to kind of be out of our own house playing music. And we call this the literary show. This is an idea that Andrew and I've had for a while of combining our pieces inspired by literature with a live reader. So today we'll be joined by a friend of ours, Christopher Martin, who's a musical colleague as well and uh, has performed with us and recorded albums with us. And he'll be reading from three different authors, Cormac McCarthy, Miguel Cervantes, and Ralph Waldo Emerson. And all three pieces are uh, by Andrew today. And so Andrew's going to tell you about those compositions. Thank you. <coughs> so we're going to start uh, with my piece called The Border Trilogy. Uh, this was composed in 2012. And it's a three-part piece uh, for flute and guitar. It's actually this uh, multiple arrangements. We actually premiered the piece with Chris, uh, Christopher Martin uh, and a quintet with uh, violin and clarinet and trumpet in 2013. But now we've been played it uh, for a long time as a duo uh, on our Viewpoints album and are coming back to it now. So it's been really fun to play this. Um, so the piece is kind of like inspired by the kind of Southwest theme uh, of the <coughs> United States. Uh, you, the first movement is called Mariskill Mines. It uh, was inspired by an improvisation I did at this abandoned mine uh, in Texas, right on the New Mexico border. And then we have uh, the second movement, Gunslinger. And then we end with uh, Black Warrior. Uh, the music kind of has like a flamenco-esque guitar playing and uh, some nice flashy fun flute playing for Carmen. And um, <coughs> the piece overall is uh, inspired by this set of books by Cormac McCarthy, uh, American author who kind of has like this Southwest kind of dark theme to his uh, writings. And um, I think to get us all in the mood, uh, we're going to have uh, Christopher Martin uh, read from us, uh, read for us uh, from the first book in the series, uh, All the Pretty Horses. In four days riding, he crossed the Pecos at Ibra Ann, Texas, and rode up out of the river breaks where the pump jacks in the Yates field ranged against the skyline, rose and dipped like mechanical birds, like great primitive birds welded up out of iron by hearsay in a land perhaps where such birds once had been. At that time, there were still Indians camped on the Western Plains and late in the day, he passed in his riding a scattered group of their wiki-ups propped upon that scoured and trembling waste. They were perhaps a quarter mile to the north, just huts made from poles and brush and a few, with a few goat hides draped across them. The Indians stood watching him. He could see that none of them spoke among themselves or commented on his riding there, nor did they raise a hand in greeting or call out to him. They had no curiosity about him at all, as if they all knew what they needed to know. They stood and watched him pass and watched him vanish upon that landscape solely because he was passing, solely because he would vanish. The desert he rode was red and red the dust he raised, the small dust that powdered the legs of the horse he rode, the horse he led. In the evening, a wind came up and reddened all the sky before him. 
There were few cattle in that country because it was barren country indeed, yet he came at evening upon a solitary bull rolling in the dust against the blood-red sunset like an animal in sacrificial torment. The blood-red dust blew down out of the sun. He touched the horse with his heels and rode on. He rode with the sun coppering his face and the red wind blowing out of the west across the evening land, and the small desert birds flew chittering among the dry bracken. And horse and rider and horse passed on, and their long shadows passed in tandem like the shadow of a single being. Passed and paled into the darkening land, the world to come.
Yeah, thanks. All right. Thanks, thanks everybody for being here and watching us play. Uh, we're at the uh, Hackley Public Library in beautiful Muskegon, Michigan. And uh, for all of you not in, not in Michigan, uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous day here in November. Um, beautifully warm and uh, it's so awesome to be uh, playing music, not at home. There's a beautiful high ceiling here and we got, uh, you know, our own personal sound person and uh, we got our good friend Chris reading for us, and this is awesome. Thanks, uh, everybody, for watching. And thanks to the Hackley Public Library and Mallory for having us. <coughs> uh, continue now uh, with a solo guitar piece of mine, uh, inspired by uh, maybe one of the greatest novels of all time, uh, Don Quixote de la Mancha. And uh, uh, this book is super long and crazy, and I still haven't finished it yet, even though I keep trying. And uh, <clears throat> after a while of reading it, you know, it, the basic idea that Don Quixote's this knight and he's going out and he's just making all these things up in his mind and just not really being true to what's happening. And uh, I kind of started to feel, feel for Don Quixote and started to think like, you know, if he, if he wants to pretend he's fighting monsters and he's really just going to the bank to uh, cash a check, you know, Sounds way cooler to go fight monsters than go to the bank. So um, he should be able to think like that and have his own reality like that. So I started writing this piece, the guitar piece of two, two movements uh, with this idea of like how there's these dual realities existing at the same time. And it's okay, they're, they're just there. Maybe sometimes the, it's a little crunchy uh, and sometimes it all works out. So um, <coughs> two parts to this. Uh, the first part is called uh, penance and the uh, second part's called uh, chivalry and uh, the hardest thing was trying to figure out uh, wh what would be an appropriate reading uh, from the book that's like over a thousand pages long and so um, <coughs> chose this section uh, where Don Quixote is uh, attacking windmills that he thinks is monsters and uh, we're going to have a beautiful reading now from uh, great friend Christopher Martin. 
At this point, they came in sight of 30 or 40 windmills that there are on that plain. And as soon as Don Quixote saw them, he said to his squire, Fortune is arranging matters for us better than we could have shaped our desires ourselves. For look there, friend Sancho Panza, where 30 or more monstrous giants present themselves, all of whom I mean to engage in battle and slay, and with whose spoils we shall begin to make our fortunes. For this is righteous warfare, and it is God's good service to sweep so evil a breed off the face of the earth. What giants, said Sancho Panza. Those thou seest there, answered his master, with the long arms, and some have them nearly two leagues long. Look, your worship, said Sancho, what we see there are not giants, but windmills. And what seem to be their arms are the sails that turn by the wind make the millstone go. It is easy to see, replied Don Quixote, that thou art not used to this business of adventures. Those are giants. And if thou art afraid, away with thee out of this and betake thyself to prayer while I engage them in fierce and unequal combat. So saying, he gave the spur to his steed, Rosinante, heedless of the cries of his squire, Sancho, sent after him, warning him that most certainly they were windmills and not giants he was going to attack. He, however, was so positive they were giants that he neither heard the cries of Sancho nor perceived near as he was what they were, but made at them shouting, Fly not, cowards and vile beings, for it is a night, single knight that attacks you. A slight breeze at this moment sprang up, and the great sails began to move, seeing which Don Quixote exclaimed, Though ye flourish more arms than the giant Briarius, ye have to reckon with me. So saying, and commending himself with all his heart to his lady Dulcinea, imploring her to support him in such a peril, with lance in rest and covered by his buckler, he charged at Rosinante's fullest gallop and fell upon the first mill that stood in front of him. But as he drove his lance point into the sail, the wind whirled it round with such a force that it shivered the lance to pieces, sweeping with it horse and rider who went rolling over the plain in a sorry state.
Thank you again for everyone <coughs> listening today. I had a chance to look at the feed. Thank you for all the compliments. It really helps us, um, you know, encourage, the encouragement helps us keep writing music and playing these concerts. So thank you so much. Also want to thank Michael Pierce, who's 
with us for the first time actually live in the room doing the sound and pushing all the buttons, so thank you. Uh, today we have a couple of uh, deals we're doing for our albums. So we actually have our album, the viewpoints that we played the Border Trilogy from up for digital download for the first time ever. So you can head over to our website. We have a shop on the foliusmusic.com. Uh, we're also doing a two for 20. So if you um, give $20, you get two uh, albums today is the other special. So uh, we take Venmo, PayPal, all the usual stuff. You can see links for that in the um, info in the social post for, for the event. All right. And the final piece I'm resting. Okay. is Andrew's taking two more seconds rest. <laughs> <laughs> he has to be the composer, the MC, <coughs> and the guitarist today. <laughs> okay, we're going to uh, finish uh, with a set of my pieces uh, that uh, go by the name of the author, uh, Emerson, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, the uh, American philosopher and poet and uh, thinker. Um, this piece is uh, different from the first two pieces. The first two pieces were always instrumental pieces that then I was using these literary ideas on. Uh, this piece was actually originally a piece for alto flute, guitar, and soprano. And so I wrote all the, the pieces. There's three, three movements that all use uh, poems, uh, epigraphs of uh, Emerson's. And so uh, we, we actually uh, put, you know, played these pieces uh, as a trio about two or three years ago, maybe four years ago, something like that with uh, uh, Jessica Louise Coe. We actually uh, performed them here at the Hackley Library uh, with her um, in some wonderful December snowstorm uh, some years ago. Um, <laughs> uh, since uh, Jessica is you know, doing her own thing, and uh, I really love these pieces, uh, but I, I I didn't know how I could make them into just for two instruments because they were so thought out, like three parts. And I don't know, one day I just started doing it and somehow <coughs> through uh, the ingenuity of uh, our, our skills as musicians, uh, we figured out how to play these uh, pieces. And I think they all have like a really interesting feeling to them that's maybe a little different than what uh, we've been playing. Um, uh, w when Emerson wrote these pieces, uh, he was grieving uh, for the loss of his uh, uh, son, uh, and I think it was a really hard time for him in his life, and he was maybe just asking, you know, like, why, or what is going on with this, and maybe we've all somewhat experienced that this year uh, through some way, is why is, why is this all happening, and uh, I think m musically, um, it led me in a very specific direction, the poetry. And uh, we ac I actually wrote these pieces. Uh, we uh, rented this little cabin in uh, Iowa, in uh, e eastern Iowa, at this uh, state park, Backbone State Park. And uh, we were going there like in early March. And uh, there was no one there, no humans. And the, the bald eagles, though, were all over. And somehow this idea, this openness, and this grandeur uh, mixed with this poetry that uh, is maybe struggling uh, with making sense out of wh what is going on with our life. And um, been happy to uh, continue playing them. And uh, so there's three parts to this. Um, <coughs> uh, the first part's called Lords of Life. Uh, the second part is called Delicate Omens. And the third part is called Moody Child. And uh, we're going to get the reading uh, from Chris. Uh, in between all three of the movements. So uh, I'll, I'll let Chris continue. Thank you. Experience. The lords of life, the lords of life, I saw them pass in their own guise, like and unlike, portly and grim, use and surprise, surface and dream, succession swift and spectral wrong, temperament without a tongue, and the inventor of the game, omnipresent without name. Some to see, some to be guessed, they marched from east to west. Little man, least of all, among the legs of his guardians tall, walked about with puzzled look, him by the hand dear nature took. Dearest nature, strong and kind, whispered, 
Darling, never mind. Tomorrow they will wear another face. The founder thou, these are thy race.
fate. Delicate omens traced in air to the lone bard true witness bear. Birds with auguries on their wings chanted undeceiving things. Him to beckon, him to warn. Well might then the poet scorn to learn of scribe or courier hints written in vaster character. And on his mind at dawn of day, soft shadows of the evening lay. For the prevision is allied unto things so signified, or say, the foresight that awaits is the same genius that creates.
the poet. A moody child and wildly wise pursued the game with joyful eyes, which chose like meteors their way and writhed the dark with private ray. They overleapt the horizon's edge, searched with Apollo's privilege. Through man and woman and sea and star saw the dance of nature forward far. Through worlds and races and terms and times saw musical order and pairing rhymes. Olympian bards who sung divine ideas below which always find us young and always keep us so.
Well, thank you so much, everybody, joining in, listening today. Um, thanks to the Hackley Library. Thanks to Mallory for organizing. Thanks to uh, Michael for doing the sound and for Christopher Martin for the reading. And our next show is December 13th. So we hope to see you all again. And uh, we're going to invite Mallory back to, to say goodbye. <laughs> Oh my goodness, thank you guys so much. What a stunning performance. It was dreamlike, it was beautiful, just phenomenal job. And thank you so much for Chris to doing the great readings and to Michael for the technical support. Just thank you guys all so much for joining us this evening for a wonderful night of music with Folius Duo. And as they mentioned, they have another concert coming up. I'm definitely gonna be watching it. Just thank you guys all so much for joining us virtually at Hackley Public Library. And feel free again to visit hackleylibrary.org or our Facebook page for more upcoming events and programs. And we hope you guys all have a great evening.